Today we're looking at Boole's inequality. This is the Boole of Boolean algebra. And there he is. So the result says this is an inequality involving probabilities. Let's give you an example what this is saying. Suppose I've got pro two events, prob say u and b. So prob what's the probability of a union b? This result says it's less than or equal to probability of a plus probability of b. And you can kind of see that this is true from this result in red, which you, if you're watching this video by now, you know this very well. So since probability is a positive number, if you minus this positive number to make this an equal, then that means probability A plus probability of B must be bigger than or equal to probability A union B. But this works for countable unions. So A union B, union C, union D, union E. So once you get beyond two or even three, then it gets a bit difficult to see where this result holds. And that's why this thing needs to be proved. If some of you think, oh, it, it, that's intuitively true for any un union of sets, then think about the result of this guy using the inclusion-exclusion result formula from problem six. Then you'll s remember that this thing is equal to the sum of the individual probabilities minus the uh, the in joint intersections of two events, mine, and then plus triplets, probability of the intersection of three events, and so on. So it's plus and minus probabilities, groups of probabilities. So it's not clear that this thing does hold. Why this result is useful is like, suppose we want to calculate probability of at least one of the, these events happening. That's what this is saying, at least one of the A, of, um, A n events are happening. A1 to A n, sorry, events are happening. We might not have all the individual probabilities from the inclusion-exclusion formula to calculate it. But at least we'll be able to say using Boole's inequality, we don't know what the probability of the union of the events are, but we can say it's not more than a number, that number being calculated value on the right-hand side, just involving the individual probabilities of the, individ of the uh, events. And that might be enough, it'll tell us, you know, is this probability big or small, even though I don't know the exact value. This thing is called an upper bound, so a result. So it tells us that the probability of unions is bounded above by this number. I'm going to show you two proofs today, but before I do that, let's just look at this result a bit more carefully. What conditions do we have about the events? Well, they may be mutually exclusive or independent. It doesn't, you know, we've got no conditions on the AIs for the case that n here, n is finite number. We're going to discuss at the end that this result also holds for when we replace the finite n by infinity. Okay, so I think the easiest proof here is by induction. I'm going to do two proofs. First proof by induction. So how that works. First, it holds trivially for n is 1. Property of a1 equals property of a1. So then the next step is to suppose it holds for n equals m, m being some kind of finite number, i.e this result so all you can see if you re replace the n by m and we're going to suppose this holds then what we need to show now that it's true for where n is m plus 1 so the next one along and we're going to use this result okay so let's just talk through this now this is equal to that and that's true by associativity recall just as an example, three sets events are in this. Same as that. Okay. The next line follows by supposing, you know, this is event union another event, and we kind of looked at that result already. We state that result in here in red. Now going from the second line to the third line is basically this argument that I gave earlier on for two events from the red here to the blue here so that's what I've used so I'll introduce now my inequality now from this line to this line the key thing is look at this we already by induction we have suppose that it holds for this step by we're using this 
So this is bigger than that. So this is bigger than that. So again, I introduce another inequality. So this is bigger than bigger than equal to this expression. But then, if you add these two together, that is just you know another way to write it is like this. I.e., we have shown that the sum of the individual probabilities n plus one of them is bigger than or equal to the probability of the union of the n plus one number of events. Notice in this proof we did not use anything, we didn't state anything that A had to be independent or mutually exclusive. Okay, I think seeing one proof of this is enough at this stage. I was got another here a proof lined up for you involving partitions which would revise the material from problem 26 and the monotonicity property which will revise the uh, uh, problem 9 goes back to problem 9 result that which is also important um, but knowing this result and knowing one proof that's pretty good and you can see that even in the introductory stats course you'd be able to no, you don't need much info to be able to deduce this. Uh, so last comment then. This Bull's inequality sometimes also goes by the name s finite subadditivity. Oh, I won't write it. Finite subadditivity. That's one thing. Second thing is that this also extends, guys, you might see in some textbooks, where they replace the n by infinity. In that case, this result goes by the name of uh, countably subadditivity or countable subadditivity sorry countable subadditivity so going from finite n to infinity works because of the sta pretty standard assumptions on the probability space we're working with and if we're doing an introductory course usually they don't talk too much about the kind of too much go into detail about this events that make up the uh, probability space so we'll leave it there okay so today I've given you an upper bound for the probability of a union of finite number of events so share like comment see you